What up, Eating History fans? This is your season finale after show. Uh, if you guys have been sticking with us all season long, we really appreciate it. Uh, tonight's episode was a blast. I'm, I was, I loved it. It was one of my favorites. And uh, the gentleman that has been with me the entire time for the after show, and whose channel we were on at the beginning until he finally was like, "Dude, you got to put it on your channel." Ken Napsaw came back. He's here for the final episode. How you doing, Ken? AK Little Stevie Van Zandt. Oh, yeah. I've got my macho man bandana on. Uh, yeah, man, I loved it. This is uh, one of my favorite episodes. Uh, I have a lot of questions, and uh, uh, it's such an accomplishment. It's been so fun to watch this. I know how much work you put into it, but now to see the faces of the people who also work so hard, it's just yeah. been fun, and uh, I have some ideas for season two. Uh, <laughs> those, And uh, this is great, man. Happy to be here. Speaking of ideas for season two, I sent our showrunner uh, and executive producer, Matt Braley, a message from my building manager who said, uh, my mom's an antique dealer. I'm mad that you didn't consult with me before the show. I'm like, all right, take it easy. Matt, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, I dropped the ball there. I apologize. Let them know <laughs> we'll be in touch. I appreciate that. Uh, Matt's going through uh, weather changes in Milwaukee, but he joined us live. You know, he's crushing it. And guys... Something big happened tonight, okay? Something huge happened today. The Mothman is no longer the biggest thing something in Mason, big. yeah, Mason okay. County, West Virginia. There's something bigger. And that that thing is Old Smokey. There he is. There he is. New history is definitely the, the new tops for Mason County. I got to say that we've definitely crushed the Mothman. Mothman and I think if we continue, we, we can put that – legend to rest for a while and everybody can enjoy some eating history yes, yes. <laughs> uh so smoky how you feeling now that the season's over buddy uh yeah i i, I don't want it to end man i want i'd love to to just for it to keep going and i hope the history channel feels the same way i hope we can uh get in their ear i've told everybody to tweet or uh Hit them on Instagram, uh, tell them that they want to see a season two of Eating History, and all the people that have sent things in, like season two of Eating History is what we need. Yeah, I think we're getting a lot of positive, positive response. I saw the uh, e uh, History TV posted our trailer at about like five o'clock or so, and a lot of people were commenting like, this is my new obsession, I love this show, uh, which, you know, it's, that's an awesome thing because a lot of their posts don't get a ton of comments you know, that I've noticed. So the fact that we're getting those comments is pretty cool. Yeah. I agree. Yep. You're right. They don't get a lot of comment interaction usually. And uh, when people yeah. feel enough, they feel strongly enough to make that comment that does hold some merit. So that's great. It's good. It's good fun, man. It's good yeah. fun. You can just wow. learn, sit back and watch grown men eat candy from the eighties. It's <laughs> Regardless of anything that happens, man, like I made a post on Instagram today that pretty much says it all. You made one uh, pretty similar, like the 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 whole crew and everything of eating history. We became a family. It's the eating history family. I love you guys. I really do. I, I feel like you guys are my brothers. You you know, Matt. I, I would call you if I had a problem, and I'd be like, man, hey, give me some advice. Or if if you needed that from me, I'd be I'd be there for you. Same with you, Josh. I feel like you guys are my family now. And I value that, man. You don't find good people every day. And I feel like we had a lot of good people involved in this whole entire setup. I think Matt is wryly smiling. I think Matt may have a rebuttal here. No, I just, I'm, I'm touched. Uh, you know, it has been a, a fun experience. I don't want to get too mushy. Uh, I know Josh will cry if we, if we go down that road, we don't want to <laughs> see that. Um, but uh, no, it's been, it's been a, a really rewarding and fun show and and i'm sad that uh that we're out of premieres and i also want history to order more so we can get back in the studio and, and make some more and keep them coming on on air because i you know my highlight of my week is sitting down on wednesday night and watching you know the show and seeing people react and uh you know i'm, I'm bummed that the, this is the last premiere but you know glad that i got to do all the work with you guys that was, you know, we did something really fun. It's, uh, it's like, I, I'm with you. I, Wednesday nights have been eating history nights, which is, you know, it, it, especially in quarantine, something, something so much fun to look forward to. Amanda even said it tonight. She's like, I'm so bummed. We don't have this next Wednesday. Um, 
So, you know, I think that a lot of people have either tweeted or Instagram messaged me or whatever, people that I don't know, Facebook message, whatever, and have said, you know, we're going to miss the show. It's so much fun. When are they making more? Yada, yada, yada. So, you know, I guess we'll have to uh, wait and see here. Yeah, I hope we did really well in the ratings tonight. I feel like, man, I was pushing hard for everybody to just tune their TVs in and just let the History Channel play in the background. If nothing <laughs> else. You know, I'm with you. turn them on and let even history play. I hope this week, uh, we, you know, we've consistently got better every week. I hadn't looked into that until you told me that last week, and I was like, eh, okay, hey, you know, let me look. And we have consistently gotten better. Our best week was last week. And I swear, I think this week is going to be our best week ever. And history ha should take notice of something like that. So we'll see. Uh, I think they will, uh, especially during COVID. Like in the month of April, news channels were breaking records, all time rating records forever for you know, the whole month of April, it was consistent. They were breaking the records, breaking the records, because everyone was watching news channels. It's hard to compete against that whenever there's a pandemic going on and everybody wants to know what's going on. They tune into the 10, the 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock news. So uh, I You're think right. we did pretty well considering our competition. I agree. I agree. And tonight's episode, I mean, I, three of my favorite segments that we did while we were shooting and the chicken a la king. With oh. the, the chicken a la cringe, uh, which let's the start with that. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the chicken a la king. Matt, how that was shot in the show and how you guys edit that together. I mean, the, the chicken a la king coming out of the package was unbelievable. Oh, this visceral reaction, right? I mean, yeah. I've seen it a million times, and every time I see it, I still either gag or laugh every time. And, and I'm seeing new details in, in that liquid every time i actually look at it uh it just looks really horrendous i just I, i'm starting to feel like i can smell it now yeah wow. I, I, I can smell it i know exactly <laughs> what that smell is and i know that i actually know what that tastes like even though it's bad and uh i i don't look forward to opening up any chicken a la king uh it's one of my worst enemies at this point and, uh, yeah, you guys can keep the chicken a la king for season two. We'll move on to something else. <laughs> How about my favorite menu? We'll do my favorite menu next year instead of my most hated. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you, boys, this, though. In that moment, what kept you from eating it? Just history with you, Old Smokey, Josh, the smell, or was there something in there that the onset medics came forward and said, absolutely not, because just no. What was it? What was it? Uh, was I think it was a, a combination of a lot of that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, it was, it's chicken, so phone. chickens. Go ahead. Go ahead, Smoke. Well, I had just gotten off the phone with my buddy that spent a lot of time in the Marines, and he had just finished telling me the story of what happened to him with his chicken a la king and how the reason he could never eat it is because the one that he ate, the, the his horror story with chicken a la king was he opened one up and was eating it, and uh, he had something that felt really hard, and he pulled it out of his mouth, and it looked like it was someone's finger. And, uh, you know, that's a he got sick on, on the spot. Not only him, it caused a chain reaction through the other guys in his troop that ended up just it. A lot of guys ended up getting sick. And every a lot of military men have horror stories about Chicken Alla King. And I have my own horror story with Chicken Alla King where that's the sickest I've ever been was from eating Chicken Alla King. There you go. Fair enough. I mean, Ken, it, it smells so bad. And uh, before we move, Salad Von Banco says, great show. I got my 80-year-old father hooked. Hope you are able to make more. Where can we see the unaired stuff uh, on the webisodes? Uh, they've been uploading them on the History Channel YouTube channel. So there's a bunch of them up right now. There's the Bugs one uh, that I one thought was, my favorites. Really, yeah, it was really, really fun. Um, but, Ken, so th the thing that's been an argument amongst – uh, couples so far, at least in my family and friends, was when I compared the smell of the cheese, the cheese spread, to when you clip your toenails and you smell your fingers after you clip your toenails. So my cousin's wife did not get that. She's like, no, and nothing smells. And my cousin was like, oh, I know that smell exactly. So it's been mostly and and Matt's lovely fiance Emily, producer on the show, was totally grossed out. Matt, you can tell the story of her face when I said that on the show. Yeah, 100%. So they're, they're on set, you know, chatting away. 
and and Josh drops that, and Emily, you know, sits next to me, and she's watching on, on a monitor and taking notes. And the look on her, you know, she's like basically like this. <laughs> and, and she goes, "Do you know what he's talking about? I don't know what he's talking about. I've never smelled anything like that." And, and I just think, you know, solidarity for all the guys out there who had to have that same conversation, where they're like. No, I don't know what that. I don't know what he's talking about. He's uniquely weird in that department. Thanks, yeah, Matt. It's like a sebaceous smell. It's almost like that nasty infection uh, that you pop out of a really bad boil or something. I assume. Uh, uh, Thanks, Matt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that disgusting oozing. It's bad. It's bad. Josh's fingernails to boil it's a great <laughs> comparison and it works for me it, i believe you smoky i believe yeah, it. it's legit it's legit give give smoky a couple of beers and he can paint pictures of smells like That's you right. wouldn't believe it's peak oh, yeah. eating history <laughs> yeah, it really was dj old boy says this show means a lot to me the premiere night i went to get food and beer to go my car broke down it was raining i had to be towed back home i cried in the shower and then the show cheered me up i don't know how much of that is true but you know what it, it was a hell of a comment. That'd you be know? a hard story to just make up on the spot. I believe it. 100%. Sure. I believe it. I believe sure. it. Okay, old boy. Um, yeah, so that, so that smell uh, – so I, I, Amanda said to me on the couch, she's like, you mean like when you pick your toes? And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> she, she also said that earrings, like earring holes, get that same smell. Yep. Earring holes, lip holes, belly button hole, any hole that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Holes. Okay. <laughs> the ones that aren't supposed to be there. <laughs> oh man. Um, so uh, the other the other thing, and somebody up here uh, said, uh, I don't know, that, uh, "Who said it? I forget." But they said, "I would have never stopped eating those peanuts." I will tell you what, we ate a lot of those peanuts. We ate I a said ton the same thing to my friends tonight. I was like, dude, we ate a bunch of those peanuts after. Yeah. And they were 40-year-old peanuts. Peanuts don't typically hold up. And we got lucky with those because uh, they technically probably shouldn't have been that good. It's that, And, Matt, the way you guys edited the – the peanut history of the show of us spitting out or being grossed out by peanuts. That was effing spot on, man. That was really, really good. Yeah. yeah. That, that added something to it for sure. I like that. Yeah. The, wow. you guys, uh, numerous times during that scene, uh, were commenting on how you thought those peanuts were better than peanuts you could buy today, that they were somehow tasted more peanutty than peanuts that you could buy at the store today. Hmm. I still yeah. think that. I think that's 100% true. Yeah. So the aged oils, the aged peanut oils? I Fine. think they were just better back then. I think if you if you had peanuts that were that fresh from 80 years ago, I think yeah. they were they would have been better. I think we, we've just kind of almost bred some of the good flavors out of a lot of our foods. Mm. It's, it's definitely possible. It could have been like the perfect age of the peanut. It could have been when they were sealed. Like there were so many different factors that made those so good. Uh, I mean, there's... I mean, the theories abound, but it's still the best peanut in a can I've ever had. Uh, they were hey, well salted, too. Yeah. And there, can, I say, can I say, Josh, uh, to you, Matt, and your crew, there were some beautiful close-ups of the peanuts, the salt, and the space candy. You guys did some great work on the fly because I know you got to grab the stuff after Josh rips it open like a caveman. <laughs> great work today. Artistic. I tried to work with Josh on that, by the way, Ken. Uh, yeah. I, Josh does have some... Uh, characteristics of wanting to just rip through things and uh you broke a couple items that we were messing with yeah. and uh you know i'm like oh what are you doing we only have one shot at this like you, you got to work with it gingerly you got to be easy with these things totally yeah so, uh, yeah i, I tried to train josh you've also described his dating life before he got married so it's <laughs> the same thing enthusiastic. yeah yeah uh, hey, Chris Thorne wants to know what happened to the Mountain Dew, not on the show or webisode. So disappointing. <sighs> Sorry. Um, got, it, there's got to be more webisodes to come, right? More, more webisodes are to come. Um, that's all I can say. You know, and if, if they're not in there, uh, yeah, there's definitely, I don't know, there's probably another, close to another eight 
maybe even 10 more webisodes that are still oh, wow. yet to drop. So there's, I think there's still quite a few. Okay. Whether or not, you know, Mountain Dew's in there. Oh, the man. The Pepsi oh. freaking challenge that I did better make it. Like, because I'm so proud of what I did with that. Like, I Matt does not look confident. I know, but it, I, and the reason is because it's going to be it's going to be hard to believe, and I I do understand that. But everybody who was in the studio knows that I legit nailed that shit. I did. I and I'm I'm proud of that. Like, I'm not I'm not saying you didn't. I'm not saying you didn't. Uh, yeah, no, I I felt like that was an empowering moment for my palate. I'm like, yep. The urban legend of Smokey's Pepsi Challenge could live on in the yeah. annals of history. What it was a, I'll say it was an advanced Pepsi Challenge, and, and Smokey aced the test. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Um, Kimberly G85 wants to know, is there any chance the episodes will be streaming somewhere soon? Hulu, Netflix, etc. I cannot get the services to watch this. Story. I know you can, you can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them on YouTube, and you can buy them on uh, iTunes. Yeah, on iTunes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then if you have the History Channel app, wow. or if you you know you can do, there's many different places you can get it. If you have Hulu Live, it's on there. I mean, there's many different places where you can buy the episodes for sure. I don't know anything about if they're like going to be picked up and streamed on Hulu and Netflix. If you already a, are already a subscriber, Matt, you might be able to answer that better than me. But yeah, the all, all I know is from my own personal experience, uh, Hulu Live does carry the show. Um, but if you, if it depends on what tier of, of Hulu you have, I, I, you know, Netflix, that would be a whole nother, you know, question. Yeah. I have no idea the answer to that. Hulu got the contract and it won't be, it won't be on Netflix. So it'll be a Hulu thing if they decide to turn it loose on regular Hulu. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, I listen and Ken brought it up, how the, how the, the space dust looked. Yeah. And the sound of that popping and all that kind of stuff. I loved how that segment turned out. And I think and the, Amanda was on set that day and she remembers it. I loved, and I still think about that space dust way more often than I should. Cause I really enjoyed that space dust. Your face showed it. You, you were <laughs> so happy. That's, I know that Josh, I know that Josh it's two drinks on the comedy store patio, Josh. And it was shining through. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of my favorite scenes, actually, and 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 it's for that reason. It was fun to just see the, the in both guys the childlike joy, and amusement and shock and awe of, you know, something that they didn't expect to happen. Even though it's what we were hoping would happen, when they actually tried it and to and to feel those pops as like a physical reaction in your mouth, it it kind of encapsulates a lot of what we do on the show. But, you know, the guys really had fun with it. And we, we thought that that was just awesome. And so every time, you know, we were revised a cut or sent a new cut into the network, we were trying to show a little bit more of that moment each time. Um, so it was fun to see the guys really enjoy it and have fun. Yeah. We put the guys through the ringer on this show. So it was fun to, to let them do something that was just fun. <laughs> every day was a roller coaster, Ken. You know, every day it was... They weren't all Pop Rocks days. They, I mean, they weren't all Space Dust days. Okay, they weren't. They weren't all Space Dust days. Just say that. They all came. That is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's a here from Chad Crypto. He said, that Space Dust was so crazy. I had some old Pop Rocks, and they did not fare well even after 10 years. The whole thing became a solid mass of sugar. Those Space Dust people had the right charm. Eh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the same sure. people that made that it, it that was all the same people. It really it just has everything to do with storage conditions yeah. and a lot to do with where you live. If you live in a humid com, uh, climate, it it'll turn out to be a solid mass of uh, maybe you might still have some of that carbon in, dioxide trapped on the, in there, but probably just going to be a solid mass. Yeah, they actually limited where they would sell these things um, based on average wow. temperatures. Yeah. Um, if they got above, I think I think it was seventy or eighty degrees average temperature, they wouldn't sell them there. And they actually had problems where these things were so popular that people would buy them from one area and bring them to another area, and it would cause all sorts of problems. Uh, something about like one of the early shipments of these uh, actually. We almost made it into the show, but didn't. Is the uh, the truck doors actually got blown off because it was too warm, 
and cause the gas to escape. And apparently the, you know, they say blown off. I, I imagine they, it wasn't that violent, but it did open up the doors of it. It's a documented uh, instance of this thing opening up the doors of a delivery truck. So that is awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. awesome. Yeah, can you imagine you're you're the truck driver it's, and you think you're like being broken into by the sons of anarchy here it's just sugar candy. Yeah. Exactly. That's pretty sweet. Exactly. Yeah. Crazy. So oh, look at Smokey's eating history hat. He's well, he's got uh, the hat now. Look at no wonder people are recognizing you in West Virginia that you cut that I, hat on. Dude, I intentionally don't wear this hat, buddy. I, I take this off. Yeah, I wore this out to to hang out with my buddies tonight, but uh, yeah, I've I've been leaving it at home on purpose. You're the nice Mothman now. The Mothman yeah. may have been a terror before. Now it's Old Smokey's the new Mothman, but he's a real nice guy, just eating space dust. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I, 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 dude, I hope to gosh we uh, we get a season two out of this because I've been pushing hard for it, and uh, I've been pushing, pushing everything hard. So you can wear that hat in New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. why not? Uh, so I can wear it on the show. You know oh, yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. I, now we're talking. Now that we're would fit something. the show perfectly. Uh, yep. <laughs> history hat, that's that's what I needed the whole season. Yep. Reminding people what they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Literally. does that get approved by network, that hat? No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely not. It, I mean, it, it's as close to the copy of the logo as possible. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That's so, why I didn't post it on social media. It's the only one probably in the world right now. I would, <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah. Real, real quick, one other uh, Pop Rocks story. So right when uh, quarantine started, Emily and I were out uh, shopping for supplies and we were at this store and it had pop rocks at the register and like everything else on this show, you sort of like do so much research on them and you see these guys enjoy them and you start craving them. <laughs> and, uh, so we're like, you know, just getting the essentials, you know, people, you know, toilet paper's gone, you know, everything's gone in the store, all the food's gone, but we've, we've got pop rocks. <laughs> so we grabbed some pop rocks and went home and tried them and, same thing. It was just super fun to just bust out some pop rocks and just try it and see that experience. So, I I don't think that there's ever been a person has put pop rocks in their mouth for the first time and not got that that look of joy and wonderment like Smokey and I got on this episode. I mean, really and truly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's such a weird thing. There's no other food or any other food item that does anything like that that I can think of. Uh, you know, other than pop rocks and space dust, it's pretty unique. <laughs> you're, you're tasting science in your mouth. Yeah. You're tasting yeah. the joy of science. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see more food experimentation like that. You know, like I think that was such something that really was happening in the 50s and 60s. And obviously those came out later, but you know, they were thinking about stuff like that, like how to make food more sciencey. Uh -huh. And you know, I think there's ebbs and flows of that through as we go through history, but it'd be fun if we went through another, you know time period like that where they were trying to you know willy wonka it up for us a bit more <laughs> yeah. well, well said matt way more, we need way more willy wonka type behavior yeah. in this world yeah. really and truly well there's plenty of those food items out there that are just wacky and crazy you just got to find them or have yeah. somebody send them in yeah real really, life you lift and drink yeah exactly yes ken thank you very much <laughs> i mean really and truly our our main goal for season two would be to get dunkaroos at some point i mean i think that's <laughs> That's got to be on the top of the list there. Or like first generation gushers. I'm just thinking about candies and foods that my mom like threw in the back of the minivan when she picked us up from school and be like, just shut up and get back there and eat the Dunkaroos. I, I, I want to do Keebler, uh, Keebler elf cookies. Yes. I'm seeing some ads for those and thinking about how those are the cookies that I was like crazy about when I was a kid. I, I wanted those Keebler elf cookies. The chocolate oh cream God. ones? Yes. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Some some Keebler Elf cookies from like '85. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, these uh, are some German cookies that I got. These are oh, probably wow. some of the best cookies I've ever had, and they remind me of the Keebler Elf cookies. Yes. See how they're like a cre yeah. uh, chocolate cream filled. Oh. Mm. These things yeah. are heaven, dude. Oh, yeah. Smoke. You, you can find those in Argentina too. <laughs> oh yeah. 
I got somebody <laughs> sending me from Germany already. I'm like, I'm already on top of that. So. Uh, Ken, if you when, when, one thing you'll get from Smokey is he will show up wherever you are with like a food item or food brand or some kind of anything food or drink related. He'll be like, dude, have you ever seen this? And I'm like, <laughs> no. Oh, see, yeah, there you yeah. go. Yes. Yes. Smokey comes on set with this every day <laughs> yeah. and just dumps it on your desk. I, I still have this stuff from leftover. Yeah. <laughs> Like you know, I, a Brazilian hot chocolate and <laughs> a uh, Japanese licorice. Like, uh, exactly. Yes. Uh, hang on. <laughs> See, here we go. Watch, guys. He's going to his wall of memorabilia back there. Uh, oh. to, what's he got? See, Bo, what is it? Uh, yeah. This is actually from, uh, hang on a second, because my, my buddy hooked me up with this, and this is like a hot chocolate coffee blend. And I believe it's from the middle. I think it's from the Middle East. And it's yeah. like. Okay. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, dude. It, it, this stuff is amazing. What is it? It's coffee, tea, and a milk mix. Coffee it and like tea. a powder? It is, it is a powder. Yep. It's like a. See the coffee beans? See the tea leaf? Yes. Yeah, it's it's this crazy mix, and I, I only had two of these, and I saved the other one because like I want to savor it. Yeah. But yeah, I drank one, and like this is my other one that I've been hanging on to. Love it. This stuff is really good. We're yeah, getting. I've, on. I've got all kinds of weird, like random shit <laughs> laying around of different weird food. Um, not wanted any other way, old smoke. We're, we're getting a lot of love for Dunkaroos, El Fudge cookies, which is Matt was getting at. Pizzeria chips, I remember yeah. those. Yeah, uh, you, yeah. Gummy sharks. Gummy sharks uh, days, man. Um, the DJ Old oh Boy, please try an OG squeeze it. I must have drank 40 squeeze a day in the summer. Like I was on so much sugar, yeah, like sugar water out of a plastic bottle. My mom and dad could not keep up with it. Uh, man, we are there. We're we, a lot of good, a lot of good suggestions there in the chat. That's fantastic. You remember like those jelly squeeze it things? They, I think they were called squeeze it's, but they were like squeeze it jelly or something yeah. like that. You're talking about gogurt? Uh, no, it was like it was more like a jello type consistency. Uh. And I'm pretty sure I don't know. I remember it as a kid and it being like the squeezable jello stuff. And I got hooked on that for a summer. I remember that. <laughs> Those um, were the days. <laughs> um, I think so you're talking about Capri Sun Smokey. That was a drink. Yeah, you weren't supposed to mix it. You just <laughs> it. <laughs> That's funny. Well said, Ken. Third, sir, what um, about you have Gatorade gum in the mid nineties? Gator oh. gum. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we had some of that actually. I, I I have some that you got you guys gave me actually, and I also have Dr Pepper gum that you gave me. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Dr Pepper gum, liquid yeah. centers. Yes, and there was um, uh, shoot, uh, somebody saying old cool squeeze pops. Peggy Gibbons saying squeeze pops. Yes, uh, my grandparents had one of those like pull out freezers from an old fridge and it was just thousands of squeeze pops. I don't know where they got them all and what they did. Oh, even Peggy Gubbins says old school big league chew, first generation big league chew. We never oh, yeah. really tried any gum on the show, Matt. I mean, I got to figure gum just kind of holds up, but you know what I mean? <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> that is not true. We'll get just 1979 tops gum. Yes. Oh, that gum does not hold up. Yeah. yeah. Some gum holds up and some doesn't. Uh, the, the, the old, old stuff that was made from real gum paste, uh, it actually holds up, but the newer stuff, when they started using synthetics, it, it just, it turns into like a rock. Those synthetics, man. We do do a Wrigley gum from that survival kit in a webisode is, uh, is coming up in a webisode. Okay. Right on. Yeah, that was good. I enjoyed that Wrigley experiment. Um, and finally, let's. I want to talk about the beer club real quick before uh, we yeah. uh, let you guys go. Um, so the one thing, and I don't know if this is going to show up on a webisode, but I know it's on camera somewhere. Matt is me riding that cooler of, on wheels. Wow. Did you ever see the footage of that? Yes, I saw it. it <laughs> that could be on a webisode because that's it, that was uh, it was a definitely silly moment. Yes. Yeah. At that party. 
Yes, yeah. yes. So there was it was a cooler Ken that had yeah. it probably went about ten to four ten to like fifteen miles an hour on yeah. four wheels. But it, you, if you leaned, you tipped over. Like so, you couldn't yeah. lean really. It had no. But it, this guy next door to Dakin, who hosted the beer club, had it on. And I don't know. I, there's got to be a picture of me somewhere on it, or video of me somewhere on it, because I had so much fun on that thing, Ken. Like I was gonna steal it, it and he <laughs> wanted it like a golf outing. It looked so much fun. Ah, oh, dude, yeah. it was unreal. Yeah. Motorized beer keg racing season two. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Well, since we're talking about the beer meetup, yeah, that was hands down the craziest thing I've ever seen happen with a consumable before. I've seen things mold, yeah, in front of my eyes after I dumped out a meat, a can of meat. It molded right in front of me within twenty minutes. But that beer turning bright green like that, I have never to this day. I don't, I don't even know what happened really. Like I would love to know the science behind exactly what. I'll tell you what, that beer. it was the same science when the Zartan figure in G.I. Joe in the 80s changed color in the sun. It's yeah. The sun. That's the How about one. the Hulk? How about when the Hulk turns green? Because uh, that's what happened, dude. And you know what? Like, I had already drank. A, like, a, my cheeks were full like a chipmunk. I take a huge swig. And then 15 minutes later, we see this beer turn green. I'm like, that's happening in my stomach. I mean, right now. legit, Ken. And then it just sat there on the counter the rest of the shoot, sure. just looking at us. Oh. That beer was just looking at us for hours. And you yeah. know what? You want to know the worst part is that we did a whole bunch of stuff in the morning, then we had lunch, and then we tried the beer. So that green beer hit, like, I think we got Mediterranean food for lunch. So, like, it hit a gyro in yeah. my stomach. And then for the rest of the day, I had like a headache that sat right here. Like the headache just sure. wouldn't go away. Oh my God, man. Yeah. It well, was, you know, we like went home the day after that and I ended up in the hospital for a week. So uh, <laughs> I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not, but that's what, yeah. Well, you know how like a Coke, a Coca-Cola can clean your car battery. That beer can actually start your car battery. <laughs> <laughs> I think it could. I think it could. It could replace the battery acid in your battery. Well said. <laughs> Those people were awesome, though. That beer club was like a really cool thing because those people just get together on the weekend. They bring beer to Dakin's house. They hang out outside and they just get hammered. It's like a tailgate every weekend. It's awesome. Yeah. Like live streaming with old Smokey. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick. I, it was good. I, people. Do, I, I did see the video of you on the uh, motorized cooler. I, I can unfortunately say it was never in the cut. Um, you know, just not really a place for it, unfortunately. Um, something else that was never in the cut that I could actually show you here, that I think you'll get a kick out of, is uh, we ha I have about an hour of this. Just, I don't know if you can see this here. There you go. That's great. Is that an episode of Forged by Fire? <laughs> show that to the Forged and Fire. I do a kick. That's it, <laughs> I've got it. Literally goes on for like an hour. What's funny is Matt didn't make it slow motion. This is just just what Josh has been doing, <laughs> pretending to be. Slow yeah, motion. that's what it looked like in real life. He's got real good kicks. <laughs> I've, I've seen those kicks. Yeah. It go. It just goes on. It's like a standoff with oh. Josh and the camera, where I just kept thinking, like, when will one of these things stop? When will, <laughs> camera cut? When will Josh stop? And I wasn't, I didn't see that happening, even though I was there that day. Oh. Um, I thought you'd get a kick out of that. That's, thank you. Thank that's, you. That was good that. stuff. That's, that would have made the cut. Thank you. That's, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that, when I told Steve, put that on my reel, that's the kind of stuff I want, Matt. That's, that's the kind of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you know they used to end the end the man show with now here's girls on trampolines. That this show should have just and now here's Josh slow motion knife fighting with himself. <laughs> should have been that. That'd be a perfect end to the show. Some cool, cool, cool ass background music. Yeah. Josh just doing his <laughs> just play kill fake ninja <laughs> with a butcher knife. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as Chad Crypto said, Josh Wick. Yep, that's me. That's me. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, 
Josh, before I know you, you, you want to wrap up some, but with Matt here as an audience and he's a powerful yes. producer, uh, here's my pitch for part of season two of Eating okay. History. Here you guys go. have this set that's this wonderful basement, and I've seen you know, you got sometimes Josh is walking down the stairs. My pitch is season two, it's a house, and Smokey and Josh live with each other, yeah. and you film them around the breakfast table every morning josh shows up like smokey's in his pajamas josh is in his jam jams it's like hey smokey today i'm making you an omelet and the eggs are 92 years old like <laughs> it's like a real world crossover that's Love what it. i'm looking for go upstairs i'm in that's my everyday life dude you don't <laughs> you don't get it i live this shit like i i eat stuff like that on a daily basis uh not for the camera i just do it just for fun <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I live a strange life, man. You go grocery shopping at a thrift store. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of my food comes from sent in things, and uh, I stuff I buy off of eBay and stuff. <laughs> so. Smokey's the only human being in the planet that goes grocery shopping on eBay. <laughs> it's got to be at least twenty years old, or I'm not eating it. Man, I, I got the the buy, buy now price on this forty two year old slice of ham. Let's get it. Uh. <laughs> 50 bucks is just too much for a breakfast. You can't pay that for one piece of ham. <laughs> oh, man. That is good stuff. Uh, so, Matt has Go Picture for season two. Smokey and Josh living in a real world house. Yeah. Uh, I'm just out back chopping knives with the Forge and Fire guys while Smokey's cooking me 30 year old ham for breakfast. It's, it's Go Picture, Matt. It's Go Picture. It's, it works for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that down, and uh, I'll send that right up the chain. <laughs> Kyle Harlow with a great comment: Museums are Smokey's Farmers Market. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, That's you wouldn't good. want to turn me loose in a museum and uh, say that I could eat anything in there because I probably would. Agreed. Uh, Jesse Michael says this was the funnest series and after shows to watch. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, guys, thank you all for uh, hanging out. You know, every Wednesday night, Matt staying up late, Smokey staying up late, Ken staying up to the, as when I stay up uh, <laughs> late-ish. And, uh, you know, Matt, please pass along, you know, from Smokey and me to the whole team when you talk to them, um, you know, that, that this was just awesome and it crushed it. I, I, I think like above and beyond of what I thought the series could look like, you guys really just, it was awesome. Yeah, we had a great team and they did amazing work. And, you know, I think... You guys did a great job uh, being being uh, good hosts, giving them good content to work with. And, and also Josh and Smokey came to the edit. First time I've ever seen that happen where talent from the show came into the edit. They brought the guys uh, pizza from Prince Street Pizza and thanked them all in person. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen talent do on a show. And, you know, Josh and Smokey wanted to surprise the editors. They didn't even tell me about it. Stressed me out. I was I was real busy, and I see them come in. I'm like, oh god. And then you know, but you know, rather you than take work those breaks at least, time, man. That, that's good. what life. That makes life worth living, man. Is yeah. those small little things like that? Uh, they make a big difference. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody's just been really kind, really nice all throughout this whole thing, and you know. Like I said to Matt, I think in a text or even to Smokey, I said, you know, there's always somebody on the internet that's going to say something negative. And I got to be honest with you, no, not that I've seen, maybe people have said it, but I haven't seen it that people have like said anything negative about the show. I've gotten texts from people that I haven't talked to in years to be like, my kids love this show. We love watching this as a family. And, you know, I think that just is a testament to everything you guys, you guys did, Matt. I think it's, uh, it's really, really awesome. Cool. I appreciate that. I mean, I'll take all the credit, I guess. So, <laughs> dude, I've, I've heard of a lot of kids watching the show, too, and a lot of families, which is not typically the case with a television show. Usually it's like a dad thing or it's a mom thing or the kids are on their own. But this this show has actually gotten families to watch it together. And I know uh, some of those families have told me about it. And that's like that's perfect, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm killing squirrels in season two, Josh. I no can't remember another squirrel death. I'll have a heart attack. I'll yeah. go for something bigger. What do we got? Groundhogs, raccoons? Let's just go for another moose and we'll just eat it right on the spot. <laughs> right on the spot. Whatever, <laughs> we go. Whatever was attacking Smokey two weeks ago. That's weird. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Does Does Emily want to say hi for the first time on the stream? Does she want to say hello? Emily, would you like to say hello? Huh? Would you like to say hello? 
Oh gosh. Hey. Hey. I'm in my jam jams. Oh. <laughs> we'll just peek your head in. There there you go. Hi guys, how are you? Doing well. Hello. Yeah. Miss those, you guys. Miss you. Yeah. Hope I'm hoping better. for I'm season two better. here. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh Emily was there. For, for those guys watching in the in the chat, Emily was there every day, uh, you know, on set watching us. And she Ken, and I know you'll appreciate this. She got me probably seven or eight times throughout the shoot. Uh, she pointed at my shirt and I looked down and she hit me like I was yeah. seven. It was my uncle. Every single time she got me. Not once did I catch it. Not once did I catch it. Well, not only did she have to deal with the stress from us being like so weird and anal, but she also had to deal with Matt stressing out about us being so weird and anal. So it's like she got the, she got the double deck of shit cards that to dealt to her. Yeah. She just dealt with it like a champ. So no, Emily yeah. done a great job. And uh, I wish we I we got to get back together at some point in in our lifetimes, no matter what. Because uh, I seriously, man, you guys are my family. Like I I, I miss you guys. So uh, yeah. but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna Cry. Smokey's got emotional beer in him. The vapors. <laughs> it was a lot of fun working with you guys. You guys made the show what it is. I mean, without you, I mean, we'd just be a bunch of bumbling fools, you know. So you guys really took it to a whole other level, and you know, we're indebted to you guys. And obviously, uh, John Schultz, the unsung hero of eating history. Really. Yes. He he, uh, made the, he was on the show. He was on the show for ten seconds, but everybody still talks about him. Hero. Ken Albala was uh, was another champion of the show. Ken Albala. Uh, we, we we honestly we just try not to talk about. So <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> oh, good, good stuff. Good stuff. Well, guys, listen. Uh, from Ken and myself, um, you know, who just want to thank you guys for coming on and being a part of this because it was just going to be Ken and I talking about the show. And then I finally got Smokey and Matt to agree to stay up. Um, thank you guys for, for hanging out and late at night. And Emily, thanks for letting Matt stay up late at night and keep you up. Appreciate it. Of course. Of course. Yeah. It's good to see you guys. I good couldn't even stay up late if Emily didn't help me do that. <laughs> Pathetic. It's like almost 3 a.m. here. so <laughs> yeah, It's very true. All right, go get some sleep. Love you guys. Congrats on season one, and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Bye. That's a wrap. Cheers, Bye. cheers, cheers. Later. Later. All right, guys, that's your final after show from Eating History season one, the season finale. Ten episodes of Glory. Go back and watch them all. Tell your friends. Tell everybody. History.com. You can check them out there. You can get them on Hulu. You can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them on iTunes. You can check out the History Channel app. Wherever you go and buy all that stuff, uh, check it out. Thank you guys all for watching Eating History. Uh, tomorrow on Ken's channel, Ken uh, twitch.tv slash Ken Napsock, you've seen an episode of The Afternoons. Friday night, uh, Tom Dagnino and myself are doing a Seinfeld Josh Party hosted by Mark Ellis and Ken May stop in for a couple of those. And um, there'll be some the Josh McCougar shows next week at, at certain points. So uh, thank you guys again for everybody that has stayed up late wherever you are. Maybe it's early. Maybe it's just where I am. For all the comments, all the super chats, everything in between, you guys have been amazing. We wouldn't do this if you guys didn't come and hang out. And you didn't watch the show, we also wouldn't be here either. So thank you again. I'm going to hit end broadcast, and then I'm just going to stare longingly into the camera. End it. Just end the broadcast.